Now I'm about to blow and hard on the city, right? What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us on the second episode of the Focus Podcast with my co host today, Danger K. Barros, Joshua Lucero, and our special guest of the day, Kevin Baca, comedian. How you doing, buddy? Not too bad. How are you guys doing? Good, good, man. Thank you for. So, you had a little, uh, we had a little issue getting here this morning. You're chasing a cat. Chasing a literal cat today. <laughs> yes. A real cat. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Luckily, got it. Got here. We're good to go. <laughs> nice, nice. So, uh, <clears throat> Danger tells me you're a comedian. Yes. Tell me uh, what you've been up to lately. Um, just recently, me and a couple of my associates, uh, Ryan Washburn and Nicholas Starr, have started running a uh, comedy club downtown. Uh, we were given access to an open space for the next uh, 10 months or so. And uh, we saw an opportunity and kind of grabbed it. It's been going pretty good so far. Nice. Yeah. It's the speakeasy. It's really cool. I went there last night. And How did, was the show? Yeah, I did. I did a time up there for the first time. Oh, nice! Like five minutes, um, uh, mostly like mostly new stuff. It's pretty good. Do you have a regular routine? I mean, uh, excuse me, not routine. Uh, regular time schedule. Uh, um, yeah, right now we're doing Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Um, doors always open at seven o'clock. The show already always starts around eight. Um, Thursdays are going to be open mic night, so that's completely free. Um, Friday nights we're going to do kind of a um, um, what we call the pile up. So we're going to bring in anywhere between five and ten comics between ten and five minutes. And then Saturday nights are going to be our big showcase where we're bringing in three or four comics and each one gets an extended set. So okay. we're trying to kind of get a, a good formula going so that people know what to look forward to each night of the week. Well, there was a bunch of people in there last night. Yeah, it was legit. Nice. Since I've started it, I've only been able to get one show. So, but and there's there's a bar there, so you can get drinks. Well, where's this place at? Please? It's uh, downtown at 109 Gold Southwest. Okay, where the um, old Soul and Vine used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, right. What was it? Well, it was something else from one of the uh, the Thai restaurant. Thai Crystal. Thai Crystal. Yeah. It was Thai Crystal forever. Wow. Okay. I was surprised because I thought it was some small space wedged in there, and I walked in the door and I was like, "This is fucking Thai Crystal." Right. And you perform like on the big gazebo. Yeah. Where people oh, nice. used to eat because there was like a a nice good like is it a gazebo? That's what I call it. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, a a deck that's been built into the place, and then they have you know um, a fan, old school light, and then we have some old drop lights that we use. And, right. Right. So it's it's low light. We're not you know there's not like a big stage light or anything like that. It's okay. really intimate. Nice. Um, it's really nice. I, Like I said, I've only been able to be there for one of the shows that we've put together right now. I'm just doing promotion and production until I can get a day job so that I can actually show up and manage it like I want yeah, to. Exactly. I'm at my night job on my phone, <laughs> checking people in at my restaurant. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll be with you in a minute. Hey, guys, how many people are there? How, how much money have we made so far? <laughs> yeah. Right on. Wait, well, hey, real quick before I don't want to I don't want to get too much further in before I do this. And I should have actually done this right off the bat. It's, Thanks, guys, for letting me know. But I want to thank our sponsors. I'm kind of a walking billboard today. I want to thank, oh, first of all, RSP Nutrition. RSP Nutrition. RSP all Nutrition right. for helping us out today. Of course, MAC-10, the fight gear to all the champs out there. MAC-10 they, fight yeah, gear. Absolutely, they support us. Also, Ray Dulce Clothing, uh, Caveman Coffee, and uh, yeah, Money, is King. Money, is King. Money is King. That's hey. right. Our new movie coming out. This summer, money is king. Well, actually, we're going to be filming it this summer. If all goes as planned, that's what we're going to be doing. So I wanted to give a big shout-out to all the sponsors. Look them up on Twitter. Look them up on Facebook and Instagram. And also, if you want to ask us any questions, we are live right now on Twitch TV. Go to our uh, Twitter, uh, at the Focus Podcast on Twitter, or you can email us uh, at the Focus Podcast uh, at gmail.com. Um, so let me ask you this. Yes. You're a comedian. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Danger's a comedian. Mm-hmm. Do you ever find that there's a little bit of a competition there when it comes to, you know, other local comedians and what you do? Definitely. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Even though we're all, <laughs> even though we're all really different, that's the interesting thing about Albuquerque comedy is everybody's different. Right. right. Nobody is anything like the other guy, and yet we all have this little twinge of like, oh, we better be crushed. You know. Yeah. Right. Like Danger's. I love Danger to Death, but whenever he goes on stage, I'm like, I want to crush better than he crushed. Yeah, it's it's, it's funny because it's, it's cool to be, it's like you against everyone kind right. of situation. Right. And it's also cool because everybody still is really, uh, it's a community of people. Um, mm-hmm. Other cities have noticed it's a few fractured communities, but Albuquerque is one main community. Right. And everyone like really helps each other a lot, but they also secretly, deep inside, want to 
you know, destroy them. But, but it's not like the one that breaks out. But it's not like the rap game here, you know, where one local rapper it's probably is like, a lot like the rap game. Really? <laughs> so you guys like it's probably you guys like, like yeah. heckle each other while they're on stage, or do you guys talk trash about each other, like in your jokes, stuff like that? Um, no, no one ever does that. Well, see, that's People what I'm saying. Talk trash to each other on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Don't do it to each other. So there's a lot of cyber slapping going on. There's, there's a little like <laughs> anytime there's like there's it'll, it's funny. It's super passive aggressive. Don't get some. There'll be some heat between a couple comics. You know, like, uh, you know, um, like, uh, and, and, and they'll be, they'll be talking shit to each other on Facebook and they'll get mean and kind of out of control. I mean, like, and they'll, like, they'll both be there and people will be like, <laughs> <laughs> they're both here. What do you think? What's going to happen? And they'll be like, walk past each other and be like, what's up? <laughs> and they'll be like, <laughs> no, like, it's like when we were promoting for last night's show, Danger, um, drummed up fake drama on the Facebook page, which was hilarious because sometimes you can't tell whenever it's a joke and whenever it's real. And there have been several times where I've been watching it and I'm just like, where is this going? What's going to happen? And then you realize it's a joke in the end. You're like, oh, thank God. And then other times it th- you think it's a joke yeah. and it's completely real. See, that's the thing. I, 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 I one person really is joking and the other person isn't. That, yeah, I've seen that several times too. You know, yeah, that was, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, what's funny is like, Kind of like, with, well, here with the local rap game, right? You know, you get some rappers who are, or I'm, I'm sure this is anywhere, but you get these rappers who not only do they drum it up on Facebook and Instagram, and they tweef, you know, that's Twitter, <laughs> you know, they tweef it out there. But then they see each other and it really does escalate, you know, and I can't see, you know, that's why I ask, because with comedians, it's like, you know, how far does it really go? I, think I mean, I know Joe Rogan almost beat up Carlos Mencia on stage, like he went up on stage called him out for using other people's jokes yeah. and stealing other people's stuff and it was going to actually beat him up. I think I think the main difference there is that I mean how many how many uh, equivalent local rap artists do you think are in Albuquerque? Just a number. How many rappers are there that are kind of on, on the level with each other all competing? Oof. I don't even know. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I just it's a random guess but I have no idea. Because there's between there's between 60 and 80 <clears throat> Comedians. I'd say we have probably and there's a lot between more, 35 and 45 working on a regular basis comedians now, yeah. and then there's another 20 or 30 that are off on the fringe. And then there's another 100 on top of that to add that consider themselves comedians. Right. Yeah, right. See very often. Um, and uh, so I don't think, I think there's so many of them that nobody really cares. So right. you can't really manufacture these crises. Royal and I were like, when I first oh, came, yeah. came on the scene three years ago, me and uh, uh, Kevin's uh, good friend Royal, we were like, okay, let's let's get this going. Let's hate each other. <laughs> People will give a fuck, right? And we were like, yeah, that would be sick. And then like we would do it, and there would be like message boards, and people were talking about things, and there wouldn't be beef or anything going on. And we'd be like, hey, what about this shit's going on? And nobody cared. And, uh, and see, you know, <clears throat> here's the thing. There's this running joke with with Josh. See, there there'd be no way we could joke with him like that because he's so literal about everything you know? <laughs> yeah like just before you got came here, before you came here he made a little comment to danger about interview you were our interview yeah and danger said there's no interviews it's not an interview <laughs> and you know josh called him out on it of course but you know the thing with i couldn't even imagine like to... a... yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> And it's funny because just just now he did it to you. He was like a real cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it a real cat? Yeah. Well, and it's funny. Um, just recently, uh, I won't name names or anything, but we had a bit of an issue with a performer because um, I run not only the speakeasy, um, but I also run a couple open mics too. And uh, we had somebody who's you know consistently kind of um, caused issues with audience members for the second time threatened an audience member after their set. And so we told them, you know, we don't want you back. You're more than welcome to come back and support the business. You can drink beer, but you're not going to go back on stage. And they tried to get physically intimidating with me. And it was one of those things where I was like, I'm doing my job, man. I don't know what you think you're doing when, because he's like right here in my right, face. Right. I'm like, I don't get what you are you think you're going to do. Because either take action, go buy another beer, or go home. Right, right. Those are your options right now, but you're not coming back here to perform. He would threaten the audience? Um, he threatened an audience member, not 
like it was kind of an inadvertent <clears throat> thing the very first time this was over a year ago and then this last time I think he'd had a little more to drink than he realized when he went on stage and I didn't get to hear exactly what he said to the audience member but my co-host came up and he was like hey he went up and threatened that guy after he got off stage he's done wow. and like, well, all right sounds good because he's he's walked tables you know he'll go up there and just you know say some really terrible shit sometimes and he's walked tables before and just not something we need. It's not a positive. Well, isn't that, I mean, out of my experience, isn't that just like an unspoken rule? I mean, as a comedian, you're going to get heckled. It's not It's not something that's out of the ordinary. The guy didn't even heckle me. Wow. Oh, that wow. was the thing. It's the guy. You Do know. you know who this is, AJ? No. I was about to text him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me have you move on. Yeah. I want to make sure you're in camera. Definitely. There you go. So, now... Hecklers, you guys as comedians, do you guys meet in the back before and say, hey, look, you know, we might have some hecklers, you know, do you guys talk about that kind of thing or do you just go out there and it, if it happens, it happens, if it doesn't, it doesn't. All shows are uh, run by like a, a showrunner, sometimes a duo of showrunners and they get to call out the shots and decide how that show's going to go. Mm -hmm. You said a duo show, show? Yeah, sometimes it's a pair of people who are running shows. Oh, yeah. Often it's friends. Cool. Okay. Um, or like one producer. So it's like, it totally depends. Especially if you if you go on the road and you start really experiencing like how people are doing it on a broad scale, you right. see how different everybody is. Because right. uh, some people are really weird and particular about shows. Wow. And some people just don't give a shit and <laughs> yeah, whatever is fine. Like you're up there, it's like, so do I do like ten minutes? And they're like, yeah, ten minutes. And they're like, and you're up there like fifteen minutes in, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. and you're like, I guess I'll just go or yeah, bring on the next yeah. person myself. And there's some people that uh, will even tell you things that not to talk about. You know, uh, there's a you know. Also, oh, there's actually like, stuff. Yeah, there's like the the high sushi bar in, in Denver. That I feel like it's like you know, don't don't uh, gross people out. They're eating sushi. Yeah, uh, yeah, all right. And like that's that's a nice rule, but it's unusual to have rules like that imposed on you before any show because it's a. Uh, you know, it's one of the last little havens of free speech, I think. Right. right. But even that's being accosted. Wow. Oh, I remember when I went into uh, D.C., I had only been doing stand-up for like maybe four months at the point. And uh, I went to this open mic, and I was talking with the bouncer when I was outside smoking a cigarette. And I was like, yeah, we're going to be going on stage soon, so what's this room like? Uh, anything I should expect? And he goes, don't say the word rape. I don't care what the context is. You say it, I will tackle you. And I was like, Really? And he goes, yeah, I don't care. I don't care if you're talking about, you know, rape seed. If you say that word, I will tackle you. And was, I was, that, like, was that his his own it thing? Was or was basically it basically like his own house rule? How were you able to get like, up there to be like, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I pushed the boundary. I pushed the boundary real hard that I night. Said rap. I said rap. I said rap. Yeah, right. And so but, there I was. He kind of was forcing himself on me. <laughs> he me again and again against my will. And I was like, help! Stop! Everything I did! And he wouldn't do it! <laughs> but, and, and you know, we in Albuquerque are fairly open to letting people do what they're going to do within reason. Right. You know, um, if you're going up there with the intention to just piss everyone off, you know, what's the point? Why are you there? Right. You know, and so... For the most part, when it comes to and and you're shooting yourself in the foot whenever you go far like that because then you're only going to get to do open mics. You're never going to get booked for any shows, right? And so you know if you want to get paid or at least get some exposure, you have to be able to realize there's a lower lowest common denominator that you got to run through, and then you can kind of start going different directions that other people aren't going. Well, and that's interesting because I thought as a comedian everything's fair game, everything. You know, like you got to know if you're an audience member and. A comedian calls you out. I mean, I, I, I mean, I when Cat Williams came here, of course that was a little bit different. He was, he was on every drug known to man when he got on stage, um, and uh, <clears throat> tried to fight me, um, and called out Samuel L. Jackson, who was in the audience, and but he was going after like he was going after people like literally attacking people's wives and saying foul oh, wow. stuff, and you know it was. But I at first I was like, well, man, I don't know if he's just like grossly. You know, ignorant to the fact that you should, there's just some things you shouldn't say, or maybe that's just com how comedians do. But then you see a guy like Kevin Hart who can make fun of people and have fun with it, and make fun of himself and have fun with it. I mean, do you guys ever have you ever said something on stage and thought to yourself, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have said that, like right after? Oh, sure. 
Yeah. You did it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, were you there? Um, <laughs> I've probably been there. My whole, like, my, my whole first year in, in comedy was like an experiment in gross-out humor. I was just always trying to be like horrible. Like I was like, okay, my shtick would be like, how can this guy be so fucking horrible? And and um, I end up making more rooms be like, Ugh. like uh, like a lot of my shows you hear like big groans, and I'd be like, yeah, I got a big groan out of everybody. Yeah, you know, I was like doing something, and <laughs> like, ah, and I feel like the whole room go, ah, and they're like, yeah, you know, and um, yeah, but I had to give up on that stuff because you know, it doesn't make people laugh. Which is what you want. As opposed to yeah. grossing them out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's people that want to go see that, the grown stuff. There's people that laugh at the grown stuff. Mm-hmm. I always love that when I'd be doing some nasty shit and a couple of, like, you know, sick fucks would laugh, you know. <laughs> Don't fuck is there, is there a laugh. specific com- uh, comedian that, that does that type of humor? Like, m- a more well-known comedian? I don't, mm-hmm. I don't I can't think of one off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Someone who exists just to be nasty and horrible. I don't think it's as common today as it might have yeah, been back in the day. I don't think but you can really get mainstream now doing that. Right, right, right. They have people like Anthony Jeselnik who kind of like his whole shtick is he's like really rude and, and you know right. kind of cold hearted. Yeah, That's he's true. emotionless in his in yeah. his. Uh, I guess you could say like Tosh. Um, Daniel Tosh would be the closest. They're kind of had on guard out there right now. Yeah, they're yeah. the ones that like they're not mainstream necessarily because there's a swath of people that are just uncomfortable. With right. Act. Well, I'm like um, I remember, I have a few things that aren't necessarily groaners as as per, you can say about, but um, like I have a whole joke about hooking up with moms because I went on this weird. <laughs> stint in my life without even trying where I would hook up with moms and I'd some of it I wouldn't realize until the next day and I'm like wait you have kids? another mom <laughs> right and uh, I was at uh, one of the old open mics that uh, doesn't exist anymore um, over what used to be Broken Bottle Brewery and I wasn't going to do that bit I'd actually had a whole like PG-13 set I had put together and then this family walks in two, two like teenage boys a mom and a dad all very country from Las Lunas and I was like wow Going for it. I want to see how how grossed out or angry I can make this family right here. Oh, so I went into the whole bit. Loved it. Dad was sitting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cracking up. The boys were like, do we laugh? Mom's here. I was supposed to laugh. And the mom's just sitting there like, yeah. You know, and I was like, all right, well, it didn't go the way I wanted it to. Super happy it went this positive route. Right. But, you know, sometimes you get up there and you're like, all right, I'm in a mood. I just want to like, yeah, to everybody, on, you know, in the audience. And then other times you're like, no, I really, I want to do well, not only for myself, but like, you know, as he was saying, we're a really close knit community, especially now more so than we were before. Mm -hmm. And so you want to do well for the people who are giving you the opportunity to go on stage. Broad humor had to go away so everybody could (laughs) come in there. There's like this big, like, like a clubhouse, like Calvin and Hobbes with their hats up on the floor. (laughs) No one who's not in broad humor can get into comedy in Albuquerque. So, so let me ask you, Kevin. <clears throat> Has there ever been a time when you've gotten on stage and haven't, you know, you know you got to perform, but something's gone on in your personal life where and you don't feel like being funny, you don't feel like being up there on stage, but you know you got to do it? Has that ever happened with you? It has, yeah. Um, well, uh, a couple years ago, um, I was, I, you know, I've always met, had an issue with drinking. Um, I still do, but I regulate myself and I have a better understanding of how much I can and can't and, you know, when and where I should. And uh, it was during the Memorial Day weekend and uh, me and my friends at a barbecue before an open mic that I was running, I got blacked out, ended up one of the people at the show, not even running the show, kicked me out. You know, like, you need to go home. And they made me leave. And then the next week I had to go back and run that show. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing more embarrassing than walking into a room that you got kicked out of with all the people who were there last time watching you and having to be like, all right, guys, so that wasn't a thing, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, there, there are moments like that all the time. Um, you won your power hour, right? No, I did you not win. I lost miserably. Yeah, so there's a, there's actually uh, there's a show here. Uh, it doesn't happen as often in Albuquerque as it used to. It's actually uh, branched out to several other cities. There's New York, Denver, 
I think Austin is going to have one now or uh, somewhere in Texas. Um, it's called the Comedian's Power Hour, and it's comedians drinking, um, essentially, you know, doing a power hour. And But instead of every minute taking a shot of beer, it's every two minutes, and in between those shots, they have to do uh, comedy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was in the <coughs> one-year anniversary show that I was immediately eliminated from, which probably was a good thing, because it didn't give me the opportunity to drink too much. But then I was brought in for another special show, which was a tag team bout with me and a local comedian. Um, actually... Uh, he just recently moved to New York. It's um, Mikey Mays, mm-hmm. and then two comics from Denver. And I was pretty much done before the show even started. Ended up, um, I I passed out. I think I don't I don't remember, but I know that I vomited, and that they had to pull me out, and somebody had to take my place. Oh wow! Um, but <laughs> it was. <laughs> Huh. My favorite part was the person who owned the house was like, oh, sweet, first person to puke at a power hour. I was like, correction. <laughs> I was the first person to puke at a power hour, but it was not this yeah. one. It was the first one. Yeah, that last time I puked here was the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that time was on your front porch whenever I fell asleep and got locked out. <laughs> but, you know, it's good. Whatever. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't at either of those shows, but I like, heard things. Like, did you hear about Kevin at the power hour? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. There was a video of me and my teammate doing um, Who's On First, mm-hmm. which was apparently the only thing that I could remember how to do properly, um, because he kept forgetting his lines, and every time he'd forget his line, I would just go right back into, tell me the name of the man who's on first base, and try to get him back into it, and you like, there's video of it, you can see that I'm trying to get him to get back in line, and everyone, he, everyone's dying because of how obliterated I am. <laughs> but still doing the, it perfectly. And the whole reason I was as drunk as I was was me and him were at a brewery rehearsing, and we rehearsed it probably 200 times. And every, <laughs> every like, three times we rehearsed it, I'd get another beer. And I'd be like, hey, man, we should get some food. And he goes, no, 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 let's do another one. I was like, yeah, well, we should really get some food. He goes, no, we'll be cool. And they closed the kitchen, and then we had to go to the show. And I had had not a single bite of food in my body, oh, and I had, like, four beers before we even got there. <laughs> But, but at least you know that, that people came out of it thinking that you were funny. That was, yeah. yeah like, that was, like, like, you reinvented the bit. <laughs> that was like, reinvented the bit, really. And like, yeah, man, it was amazing. Everything else was terrible, but that was great. <laughs> I was like, good to hear. Glad, glad something worked out. Yeah. You know, uh, Kevin is going to be hosting the Mustachio Bashio this year. I'm so excited about that. Um, I hosted it the last three years. Wait, what is it called? The Mustachio Bashio is the biggest party in Albuquerque. It's at the El Rey Theater, usually. Um, the first year I was involved, like five years ago, I, I did, started doing commercials for them when um, Lauren Poole was hosting. Then we did some like Lynette commercials for them and stuff before she retired the character. You know what I'm talking about? The what show. is the Mustachio Bashio? It's the biggest party in Albuquerque. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've already established that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Everyone either grows or pretends to grow, like, the biggest, sickest mustaches they have, get crazy outfits, and they go to the theater, and they, like, and it's, they oh, have Oh, mustache. Play. Yeah. I thought you said pistachio. No, mu- mustachio. <laughs> mustachio Bashio. Ah, okay. Yeah, so the last three years in a row I hosted it when I was at El Rey and Sister Bar and, um... FX one or was Yeah, and we're finally back at El Rey. Um, except, I don't know, it just seemed like it was time for someone else to do it. So, Take the crown. Yeah, yeah, and handing it off to this fine gentleman here. Um, I appreciate Mostly because, it. you know, my girlfriend doesn't want me to grow a mustache. And, uh, Why don't you grow a mustache? Respect that. I had no intention to, but... Um, you should go to the and go to the mustache of Bashio theater. And when's this mustachio bashio? It's gonna be uh, in the middle of March, March twenty something. Can't remember exactly. It'd be good to know so that I can tell work that yeah, I'm not yeah. there. <laughs> we'll get on that. We'll get on that. Could um, you imagine him with a mustache? Yeah, I can. I think it's pretty disrespectful that you haven't had one the whole time. I, I can see the pencil mustache just right yeah, on the edge right of the lip. <laughs> Especially for our culture, you should have one. That should just be a given. I think you should go. Please to, forgive me. You could use your help on stage because during the the costume competition, it's very hectic. Because um, I'll probably you'll be hosting, but I'll probably be there mm. helping you, like getting people, like wrangling them around and stuff. Like I that. should totally do that. Uh, all right. I, I think you should come. Okay. You should come. All right. And uh, that's in Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that will slick your hair back. 
that question you asked uh, Kevin about uh, saying something and then regretting it on stage. Mm. Like the biggest <clears throat> thing that ever happened to me was uh, the first time hosting the Stashio Bashio. Um, mm. Second time. Like when it was at the Fest and Royal was there and mm. saw it. And I was like, I was about to bring on the red light cameras in the upstage bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were like, okay, you know, 30 seconds or 20 seconds. And I was like, great. And uh, so I started bringing them up, and then one of them tapped me on the shoulder, and was like, shit, so I fucked up, uh, I need like five minutes. Uh, and I was like, oh crap, really? And I had already gotten the whole crowd's attention, and I turned around, and they had already killed the house music and everything, and I turned around, and I was like, and I remember the guy who runs the show beforehand was like, if something like this comes up, maybe just do some of your comedy or something real quick. You know, just, you know, make them laugh real quick, and then bring them up. And I was like, okay, I'll try that out. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and so I'm like I told uh, I told my Burlington joke oh, okay you know, I, I told this joke about how someone needs to move from Burlington usually it's just like a quick joke it's a fallback one always gets people to laugh you know it's an easy go to and I told this joke to the rooftop that was packed with people and everyone was quiet and everyone was listening to me because they thought I was about to be like the red light and I was like and I told them a joke instead. <laughs> they were like, it stayed quiet. They all heard me. And then at the very end, there wasn't a sound, not a single laugh, not a clap, not a smile in the house. All I could see was Royal sticking out of the crowd just going like, no. <laughs> oh, my God. And he like put his hands on his head and turned around and looked at the crowd and was like, oh. <laughs> like, That's definitely Royal. <laughs> And so I panicked and I just said, the red light cameras, and I handed the microphone and bust out there, and then they sat up for four minutes and then played. <laughs> nice. I just, I just, I cut and run. I cut and run is what I did. There you go. But you can make that call. Yeah. You can do whatever the fuck you want. What, what uh, comedians do you admire, like, that are known, excuse me, more well-known? Well, I definitely admire this guy right here, because oh. he's a great host. Thank you, he sir. He's a warm personality, he's an excellent host, mm -hmm. he's always good at coming up with bullshit to fill time between things that aren't necessarily bits that just, you know, really mm. entertaining and nice, lovable uh, segues between comics. So, like, if you ever check out his open mics at Back Alley, that's, like, a really good one. I always try to make sure to go to that one. Um, a Dew Cafe right now. A Dew Cafe. Not the biggest fan of a Dew, but you guys should go. It's... It's in flux at the moment, too, since ownership has transferred from one brother to the next. Okay. And so we, I think we're going to have a little more creative control over that, um, which we kind of already did. But um, And I'm, I just recently started hosting that one about two months ago. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a fun show. But Back Alley is definitely my favorite one out of all of the shows that I like. Book gigs or anything like that, Back Alley Open Mic is by far my favorite one. We had shut down the movies last night. Yeah. Uh, um, which, speaking of that, um, there's a chance I think we might be moving you guys into um, the speakeasy as hosts of the Thursday Night Open Mic. Huh? So we can talk about that a little bit more later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let me ask you this. As far as, like, when you guys see, like, comedians come through here, like, George Lopez, <coughs> Kevin Hart, uh, Amy Schumer, those, you know, do you guys ever try to connect with the promoters and get on those shows or? No. I mean, for comedians, how is that, you know, because I like with rappers, you know, you see a big rapper come through here and these rappers are after the local promoter. And, oh, can Usually you... we don't have access to mm -hmm. those kinds of people. Amy Schumer comes here. She has two people open for her that are on her writing team. Mm -hmm. They're not looking for opening acts. There's a couple like... Uh, what about Joe, the stage? Joe Rogan and um, Doug Stanhope have both hit up local comedians yeah. open for them. Those are the only two acts that have ever come through that I know of that are on a national level. Yeah. But there are like B list well, con comedians constantly, like Kanae, um, and like all the time coming through here. Uh, oh, and actually, no, that's not true. Uh, um, they just did the uh, Hispanic Cultural Center. Genevieve and Matt opened for him. Um, Mark Marin. Yeah, Mark Marin. Yeah, yeah, so he had opened. Locals. I don't know if you were there, but we went to go see uh, Bobcat Goldthwait at uh, stage, mm -hmm. and I, I know he had some locals opening for him. Yeah, they um they do their own personal booking at the oh, stage, okay. and so they oh. always do a traveling tour act. Um, depending on the There's two that open for him, the first one is a local, and the second one is not. So yeah, the second guy who opened was a guy from Denver. 
Um, and they, they do are. try to pick from like the Southwest whenever they go for that. But the thing about the stage is um, they're very stringent on what you're allowed to do on stage, especially as a local. Um, so you have to essentially be PG, PG-13. Um, uh, I remember somebody was telling me whenever they went through their like pre-interview to go up there, they were told they get like one damn. And then past that, if they say anything other than, you know, what it could be considered fine for talking to children's TV, they would never be asked back. Mm. And ah. I don't know exactly how it is, say, now, because I know that was about a year and a half ago. <laughs> why, why, do they, why do they have those... It's a casino show, and so even though it is an adult crowd, they do know that they're going to be dealing with an older constituency. Well, they, should have, they should have warned Bobcat Goldwick about that. Huh? Right. <laughs> it's ultimately, it's good for business. The movies that make the most money are G-rated movies. Mm-hmm. The biggest comedian in the history of the business is Jerry Seinfeld, and he only does PG. Mm-hmm. He oh, never does film, ever. Well, really? You yeah. look at the guy with the puppets, like <clears throat> Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham. Right. As comedians, most comedians despise that guy. Him, yeah. Like, I hate watching him. But He's not a comedian. He's comedian. Comedians, like, watch it and they're like, this is garbage. But, but like, people, oh, love just, people yeah. who live out in the trailer in the middle of nowhere <laughs> love Jeff Wait, Dunham hold on. so much. He's got I, don't live, listen, I don't live in a trailer. I actually happen to love Jeff Dunham. But then... <laughs> I'm going to say it. I love Jeff Dunham. <laughs> I love the Muppet Man. He's a fight for a See, that's the thing is, you know, that he, he just proved what we were saying in, yeah. when you guys saying you like him because he is marketable. He, you can push him we on said he's a broad comedian, So we're comedians and we don't like him. You guys aren't comedians. You do like him. That's, that's pretty much what we said. And that's right. who, and that's, you it's guys are the insult. ones he wants to like him. He doesn't care if we like him yeah. at all. <laughs> he wants you guys to like him because right. you're the ones who are going to be essentially paying his bills. We can't afford the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? That's <laughs> why you don't like him. Right. Hey, let me ask you this. Hey, let me ask you this. this. If Jeff Dunham said, hey, uh, I'd like for you to open up for me at Santa Ana Star, Santa Ana Star Center. In a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, then, then, oh, you wouldn't be mad at him then, would you? No, oh, not at all. You'd get up on stage? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless we stop doing my thing. <laughs> taking selfies with the puppets back then. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, of course. This is so racist. Dude, check it out. <laughs> now I know to tag you. And just like, get this buddy help you. Check it out, Martinez. Check it out. Oh, yeah. I, uh, listen, I was there. I saw him when he went to the sat down and start to see it on. I thought he was great. Yeah, he puts on a great show. For what sure. about, uh, what do you think about, and this is kind of, I've always wanted to know from a comedian standpoint, who do you think is better? Kevin Hart or Cat Williams? Ooh. Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dude. It's I expect serious. him to say something like that. And seriously, <laughs> I grew up on that, dude. Um, I listened, like, before I even knew what stand-up comedy was, I had all of his albums memorized because I listened to them over and over again from such a young age. I can recite Jeff Foxworthy. I could probably do like two hours of Jeff Foxworthy. I don't think anyone knows that. That's <laughs> amazing. I'm like, that's amazing. The biggest secret, secret Jeff Foxworthy fan in the whole world. Um, and I, I respect because all of his stuff is PG too, and that's why he got so big. He got like superstar. You're on this whole PG thing yet. When I saw you perform, you won't do anything PG. No, I have I have a ton of PG material. I I just got after my last performance at the Los Alamos show last year. I did. 22 minutes of PG material for kids and grandmas and all kinds of people, and and I I murdered them. And the video is up on YouTube for proof. Like I completely killed the room. But I had the secret. I had lots of Los Alamos jokes because I'm from there. But all the same, like it was all clean, completely mm-hmm. squeaky clean. Um, Scott Goff was up right after me, and uh, he's. <clears throat> He's great because he does the same thing. He can do nothing but clean material, but he just rips off the audience. Mm-hmm. He's a genius at what he does. Okay. So, but, but he was like, when he was coming up on stage after me, he's like, dude, like leave some for us. Holy crap. <laughs> and then the dude who was headlining, this dude from, uh, uh, his name was uh, Roger from Denver, and he bombed, bombed. 
because and afterwards me and uh, Scott were like, what happened? What the hell happened? Because they paid you so much more money than us. Yeah. <laughs> to be here and they put you in a hotel room. What happened? And they were like, well, they said PG. <clears throat> and I knew I had this pretty much clean material that wasn't filthy. But then I saw the grannies and the kids and I was like, oh, that PG. And I was like, oh, I don't have anything. And so he just tried to riff and couldn't and he just, he just bombed. And they liked me so much, they asked me to back to book all the next comics for the next show and host it, which this will be in March. In oh, Los nice. Angeles. Okay. And they're selling tickets. They're selling these tickets for 20 bucks. They're filling up the theater. The Dwayne Smith has a 400 person capacity. Wow. They're filling it up. Wow. They're selling $20 tickets up there. We should go check that out. Yeah, it's it's like so cool. I have, uh, I have well, are you inviting or and John Quagar? Are you inviting? No, Matt I'm, I'm saying I'm trying to support our fellow nice. our fellow hosts, so That's I'm just trying to be right there. Yeah, um, but it's hard okay. to find. Like I get on the comedians page to look for <laughs> comics that can do clean material to book this show, and I get hit up ten times out of 120 people on the comedians page. Well, and if I would have had a clip. Because uh, just recently, uh, Player Two did a corporate gig for a construction company. So it was, you know, one thirty in the afternoon at a Mario's Pizza in front of a construction company with all the kids and the parents or grandparents and everything. And, uh, it, you know, we, as Player Two, most of the comedians in that group aren't necessarily PG comics. Um, but it was one of those things where it's like, this is an opportunity. They're paying us a substantial amount of money, more than we've ever been paid to perform before. Let's get it together and make it happen. And um, over time, I've been doing stand-up for almost four years. And at first, I was like, ah, I'm never going to try to do PG because, you know, fuck that shit. <laughs> and now, I'm like, well, no, everything needs to be marketable. Right, um, right. Which, back to your question over Kevin Hart or Cat Williams, I would say I would go for Kevin Hart over Cat Williams. I love Cat Williams, always have. But when you watch the two guys, one knows what he's doing and knows that he has a specific crowd that he's playing to, where the other guy plays to the world. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy. And I give him way more credit in being someone who can go on any stage and make everyone laugh, rather than a guy who walks in and goes, oh, you don't like me? Right. You know, um, but I've started to develop every single one of my jokes, other than maybe like five of the jokes that I use on a regular basis, are all workable to go from either completely PG where I can do it in front of a mom and her baby and you know grandma to going to a club that's all a bunch of you know crazy rockabilly types and cracking them up uh, like with that uh, the corporate show I have a joke where I talk to a couple and I ask them about um, their bathroom habits like when was the first time you took a dump with her still in the house <laughs> and when was the first time you passed gas in front of him and it's this whole long drawn out thing and uh, I did it with the owners of the construction company, mm -hmm. two older people who have been together for like 47 years, they're in their 60s, and the wife was crying, she was laughing so hard. Mm -hmm. And it was completely PG, and you know, I had little kids running around while I was telling the joke, and then I've told it at open mics where it's not PG at all. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, it's an interesting skill to have to teach yourself after a while when you learn, if I want to make money doing this, this is something I'm gonna have to do. Right. Right. Well, I think that's true of probably any profession. You have to find your find the the easiest flow for the whatever you're doing. That you happy know, medium. Yeah. 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 Well, and you know the thing is, like, I've, I've gotten, I've had the opportunity to see both of uh, Kevin and Cat live. Um, I hosted for Cat Williams when he came to Albuquerque, and that was uh, one hell of an experience, I gotta say. But I've also, I mean, I think I think Cat's a, a He's funny as hell. When he finally gets to doing what he's what he's good at, you know, when he's not just talking trash and he's not calling people out. But you're right, Kevin. He can go from commercial to raunchy to, you know, <coughs> he, he can hit a lot of different variables in his act. <coughs> you know, most people can't. And the thing is, I, I you know, for the longest time, you look at a guy like Kevin Hart, who for the longest time was he was struggling. He was trying to find his way. He's been uh, out there forever. Yeah. He was on, you know, deaf comedy back in the right. day. You know? And and nobody gave him any credit. And it's funny because I saw an he's like sixty years old. <laughs> yeah, <that's unreal. laughs> I saw an interview with him recently, and you know, just about and then an interview where these other well-known comedians were actually calling him out. You know, being like, "Oh, you're a sellout. And you, you know, you're a media whore, and this and that." You have writers. Yeah, and, and yeah. He, he's like, 
Yeah, of course I do. I, I sell out stadiums. Mm-hmm. That's right, I am a sellout. And he's, I, on, he's on a podcast with somebody where he defends himself and he makes a really concise and clear case very quickly. Is I think actually you weird one that he, he yeah. shared that mm-hmm. with me. Yeah. And it, it was um, actually, there was a couple comedians, and, and nobody knew if it was a joke or not. Mike Epps yeah. called him out, and Faze on Love called him out. And, you know, just basically like, yeah, you, you know, you don't write your own material and this and that. And I mean, he put it out there. He's like, look, I've gotten to where I'm at because I have a good team around me. Mm-hmm. Don't hate on me for that. Don't hate on me because I work. You know, yeah, I do. I try to do 20 movies a year, of course. I mean, Mike, your time span in this industry is this big. Mm-hmm. You it's don't like sometimes, yeah, my boys throw ideas at me and it works its way to my material. That's right. Yeah. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, exactly, right? <laughs> and that's, and that's something that especially like this newer crop of comedians, um, like the younger kids and then people watching comedy, they don't realize the guys that you're watching doing these big televised gigs, they aren't writing all of their own. No, they write some of it, right, right, right. sometimes a majority of it, but they have teams writers like um, Funny People, the Adam Sandler movie. Mm-hmm. There's a case in point right there. He's <clears throat> looking for someone to write jokes for him. Right. That's a true case. Um Working with Player Two, the the group of comedians I'm with, we're constantly whenever we're watching each other and we can give a hint or a tip or you know a, a little a tweak to a joke, we're doing it because we're trying to help them right. get right. further. Right. Um, and you know, and like one of my favorite things, uh, Nicholas has this joke about um, you know being a big guy and because he's a real big dude, but he's soft spoken, he's not really aggressive or anything, and. Um, there's this one line where he, he, you know, I don't want to give the joke away, but he's like, I feel like um, consent takes a lot of the fun out of prison rape. And I was like, but well, you're not just giving consent, man. You're giving aggressive consent. And then he was like, boom. And he started using it. And every time he says aggressive consent, it just crushes the crowd. And it's one of those little things. Like, he's done the same for me. There are little tweaks that people have given me to my jokes. And they, there's jokes that I've had that haven't gotten a single laugh. Mm. And then one person's like, "Hey, man, you should do it this way. I like, do it that way, and then it blows up." As I love getting like, feedback like that. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Sometimes I give feedback like that, and I get really self conscious as soon as I say something. Yeah, that. Yeah. One, yeah, I was like, Black Mike was giving me a joke he wants me to do. He was like, "You should do this joke, man." And I was oh, like, yeah. "The joke doesn't work for me, though." And he was like, "Yeah, but it's hilarious." I was like, "Yeah, it's hilarious when you do it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's your style. Right, it's, right. It doesn't fit right. my character when I'm on stage." Mm. Plus, I have a joke that already talks about that subject that's completely opposite of the point you're trying to make with your joke. So if I'm in the room and you want to make that joke, go for it. I have no problem with that, but it's not a joke I could ever use. Right. And, you know, and it was, he was like, all right, cool, man. Like, it wasn't one of those things where, like, oh, you don't think it's funny? I was like, no, I think it's hilarious. It's just not something I could ever do on stage. Yeah. And so, yeah, you know, um, back to that point, you know, these guys who are working, who are doing it all the time, who are selling out stadiums, like you said, yeah, they have writers. They have teams of writers. And hey, don't get that confused. Writing for someone is hard. It's yeah, not easy. It's especially for a guy like that. You know, like I actually had a buddy who tried doing stand-up a couple times. And uh, he tried it a couple open mics. And he, he wasn't really feeling it. But I kept telling him, dude, you're so funny. Like, you're funnier than me. You got to do it. And like he just he didn't, couldn't do it, couldn't put it together. And he was just, ultimately the performing is what screwed it up for him. Right. And so I was like, okay, well, if you're not going to do it for yourself... I'll give you some money if you can write a joke for me. You know, like, write a joke for me, I'll give you 50 bucks for the joke, you know? Mm-hmm. He's like, I know you're broke, you just got fired, so write me a joke. And like, and so he, he got all excited, and he wrote a bunch of jokes, and was pitching it to me, and all of them were just like, mm, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, no, I can't tell that joke, no, I can't tell the joke, you know? It's, so I, it seems like it would be insanely hard to write for somebody else. Well, it's gotta be frustrating as a comedian, people know you're a comedian, they're like, be funny. Oh, ooh. tell a joke. <laughs> Case in point, the morning news on Wednesday. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. That's like telling someone you're a singer. Okay, sing. Tell the joke right now. No, no, exactly. So we went on, uh, me, Kyle Merrill, and Nicholas Starr went on KRQE this morning. Um, and we were supposed to be talking about, oh, like, just comedy in general in Albuquerque, and then the speakeasy and the group that I work with. And so we had to fill out this, you know, big, long information packet a week beforehand, and and then they wanted one of us to tell a joke. Like they're like, can one of you do like a minute joke? Here you need to type it out so that we can approve it. And we're like, yeah. Um, and they they're like, Kevin, you do it because Kyle's like, I really don't have anything that can be put on TV. Nicholas is a long form guy. Most of his like, even one of his jokes, jokes can take like 
three to five minutes to tell. And I was like, man, all right, I got to break this down. What can I do that's on TV that I can also, sorry, <laughs> that I can also do in a minute. And so I had, I've been working on this joke, got it set up, typed it out, sent it to them. So they had it on paper. And then in the pre-interview, the lady's asking me some questions and all of her information on her script is wrong. And I was like, really, guys? Like, I sent you a very detailed information. What do you mean, like, what? She's like, so what's a, what's a pop-up comedy show? And I said, well, it's actually not a show. It's a venue that we do shows at. And, like, I was very polite, and I just kind of explained that what she had on paper was not necessarily what I had sent to her. She was done with me the moment I corrected her. And you can tell. Like, Kyle was like, you just don't like you. And I was like, no, I can tell. And she did the smiling dismissal, like, okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was the one who was supposed to do okay. most of the talking. And if you watch the interview, you can see that almost every time I start talking, she immediately cuts me off. Oh, man. Well, the joke portion was supposed to happen after the interview. We were supposed to, one of us was going to, like, like they always do on, like, the morning brew or whatever. Mm -hmm. They have a person stand there and do their bit. Well, instead of that, she just goes, well, tell us a joke, guys, Kyle. And he was like, uh, 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 how to, uh, and, like, he did his bit. And then she goes to me, and I was like, okay, well, I'll cut my bit down real quick and do, like, a quick form version of it. Oh, I get to the halfway Pressure. point, right? I get to the halfway point of the joke, which isn't the punchline, and she cuts me off. She goes, "Oh, I thought that was the joke," oh. and I was like, "Yeah, it wasn't." So here's the punchline. She goes, "Oh, yeah. Well, I thought that other part was the joke." I'm like, "You're," and then, but Nicholas, though, <laughs> yeah, it was so rude, and I was just like, "You got to be kidding me!" But Nicholas was the best. She goes, "So Nicholas," he goes, "Oh, I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm a long form comedian, so there's not enough time for me to do one." jokes and he just looks at her and I was like my man yeah. you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and so it's one of those things like oh okay. tell us a joke and we're like no we rehearsed the, I was supposed to no what's right. going on you know and I hate whenever every, all, all of us hate oh tell me a joke no are you paying me no <laughs> exactly well and now that we have more paid gigs in Albuquerque because for the longest time people would just be like uh but now that we can you know you're giving more opportunities for paid gigs. We're trying to do that with the speakeasy too. Now people can literally say, are you paying me? <clears throat> no. Well, then I'm not going to tell you a joke. You know, like, come to one of my shows. We have to distinguish ourselves from the comics that just get into the open mics. <laughs> right, right. There's a few different pools. There's like, there's the op there's comics that go to the open mics and the next tier is like, do you get booked at shit? <laughs> yeah. 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 Are you marketable? You know, there's, yeah. like, there's like, do you get booked at a show that you yeah, right, and that's the next tier of you know, because you got your inner comedy, your book that show your show that books and pays you, and then the last tier is like, are you one of the five comics that can open for an act or go to a casino? Because there's like five more or less, yeah, comics that do that here, you know, yeah, maybe 10 depending, right? right. If it's just the stage, there's like 10 of us, but if it's into the mountain gods or opening for a national act, there's mm -hmm. really only five. More or less, yeah. Well, and then with, with the fact that a lot of us are trying to book our own shows, you know, one thing you have to be really careful about is not trying to make it seem like the only reason you're doing it is to get yourself stage time, mm -hmm. which is something that I've always tried to, you know, step as far back away from. You know, I've been producing every show at the Speakeasy, doing all the promotion, and every time they're like, oh, I'll see you there. And I'm like, actually, you won't. And they're like, wait, why? I'm like, well, I have a night job that I have to go to. Like, but you're booking the shows and why aren't you there? And I'm like, well, because I can't. And that's not why I'm doing this. I'm not doing this so that I can be there. I'm doing this so that I can get everyone else an the opportunity. The producer. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and um, Nicholas was talking about, he's like, I want to get you a headlining set, which I've only done maybe two full headlining sets where it's actual 30 minutes, not, oh, you're headliner. Well, how much time do I get? Six minutes. Yeah. Okay, how much time does everyone else get? Okay, Six minutes. Like, that 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 so you're just saying right I'm right. the last comic on the lineup is what you're telling me. Right. <laughs> but um, you know, when he said that, I was like, I really appreciate that you want, you know, that you want to put me as a headliner in a show. Um, that's not, you know, we're all doing what we're doing on our own to get to that point. But as a producer, I'm not producing to get myself on stage. I'm producing to get <clears> other people out there. But there are a few people that you know we'll, we'll name, <laughs> we won't name that you can definitely tell that the whole reason they're doing that is because they want to get themselves out there on stage. You know, either, you know, when they're hosting, they might be a little long-winded with their intros and outros, or, you know, they bring in a bigger name, and then they are the opening comic. Uh, you, know what, you know what sucks is when a host of a show does jokes in between acts. 
And not even like one, one joke, but like, stage, you know, like, oh, all right, keep it, keep it going for that Josh, you know, and like, anyway, so I was looking, and you're like, no, 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 stop, 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 you know, it's so awesome. What comedy show we talk about? Because I've never. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be something that I could see you doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Squeeze in an extra joke. Yeah. Not even a comedian, just out there, just talking. I do, I do 10 to 15 at the beginning of my show at Microbar. Um, and then I just kind of bring up the other ones after that. And then I end the show and I don't try to do anything. I haven't headlined or featured or spotted on it. And I don't plan to anytime in the near future. I kind of have like a higher standard for who headlines there. Mm-hmm. Kind of the same thing that you're saying about my, like my standard as a producer of the show for who headlines. Um, like I don't. I don't meet that bar as a performer myself, you know. Hmm. Maybe I'll do the feature spot. Right. But I won't headline my own show because I want it to be... Somebody else. Ni- I want it to be a nicer show than that and to be considered like a show where you know that it's got good acts and it's right. not like some nepotism going on. It's well, a problem with Yeah, but, here's the, but listen, here's the thing. And I got... It, it's, like, it's like with anything else. I mean, you know, you see actors do it, you see musicians do it, you see artists do it. You know, I, why is it different with comedians? Where I mean, why shouldn't you be able to? If you're producing a show and you're the one putting in all the work, put yourself out there. I mean, look, hey, you know, I mean, it's not. <clears throat> and, and I and I actually heard you know an interview with the same with the same person, Kevin Hart, where he said like, why, you know, hey, I don't mind putting my boys on, but let's you know let's be real here. I'm trying to make it. I mean, well, I idea is that I think we're about negotiating the appearance of insincerity. Yeah, if I just threw myself on as the headliner of the microbar the, in the first year mm-hmm. of its production. People would be like, "Oh, well, I know what's going on here." Mm-hmm. Right? But if I didn't for the first year, and people anyone notice that, yeah. they'd be like, "Oh, okay." Well, I think I mean yeah. I think everybody. But here's the thing: I think everybody's perception of that insincerity or ego or whatever it may be. Every, everybody's no matter what, you're not going to please any everybody. Your position is fuck the haters, do it. Yeah, and I'm like, listen, because well, 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 as long as you. It, have professionals, you know what I mean? I mean, because I mean, in the grand scheme of things, everybody in this planet is trying to make better of themselves. Right. So you can't you can't fault somebody for trying to. I mean, hypothetically, if I was in your shoes, you can't fault yourself if you're in a position to to promote yourself as long as you don't as long as you don't step on other people theoretically to get there. You know, be yeah, professional. About that's it. what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's like with Player Two, um, a group of comedians I work with. Uh, we got together specifically because we knew that we all had quality that we could put on stage, but we weren't being given the opportunities. And we saw a lot of other people who weren't being get, been given a lot of stage time that deserved it. Mm-hmm. And so we formed the group so we could not only produce shows to get ourselves on stage, but also to get other people on stage. Right. And at first, the first few shows we did were just player two, you know, the five of us that are in the group. And we had a few people who were like, oh, really? And it was like, well, that's the point. That's what we're doing. Right. We're, if you give us some time, you'll see that this isn't just for us. Right. And then finally they started noticing that because, you know, we, we started an open mic on the same night as another open mic, not to compete, not to take away from, but to actually expand. Right. You know, when you have two shows happening in the same night, that means that you have two different audiences. And instead of having 30 comics at one open mic, you have 15 at each, which means everybody gets a little bit more time and they're seeing a broader audience. And the people running the other open mic were, they came at us strong, especially on Facebook. You know, oh, this, this, and this. And we're like, no, you don't get it. We're not trying to compete with you. We're not trying to take your business. We're trying, quite honestly, to see a completely different audience. Right. And once they realized that and they saw that, and they saw that not only were we advertising for them while we were advertising for, the, for ourselves, but also just trying to give more people an opportunity, things became more of a team effort. Well, it's, a, it's like that, you know, it's like that whole thing like Jay-Z said once. He was like, I can't help the poor if I'm one of them. So I got rich, gave back to me. That's a win-win. It's just like what Jay-Z said. That's okay. <laughs> right? You know? Time and again. So he, let me ask you this. Yes. Who's watching the Super Bowl this weekend? The Super Bowl? Mm. Are you watching the Super Bowl? I don't know, to be honest. I, maybe. I always end up watching it. Like, some, like I'll, I'll like follow somebody like to a room. And then, right. like, well, then, then, then you end up, end up like, watching oh, it. Yeah. Let me talk to the man in the room then. <laughs> <laughs> let me talk to the man, the real man in the room. Josh, who, who are you going for this weekend? My family's from Denver, so Denver all the way, obviously. Horses, huh? Yeah, horses. Oh, hey, you're not doing the Cam Newton? Oh, I, I wouldn't even know how to do that. Is that like a football thing? Like whenever you say who you think is going to win the Super Bowl, and you're like, I think it's going to be the horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, no. That's what they're calling dabbing. Now. That's, that's oh, yeah. Cam. And listen, that's, 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 Cam, that's, Cam's, that's <laughs> Cam's thing. Thank you. That's Cam's thing, right? 
So you like you heat it up with the blowtorch and then you go. Hey, Tim Tebow had his thing, right? Remember? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like the Tebow. Yeah, the Tebow. He invented the thinker or whatever. Yeah, you can't hate on that. I I've been sending the the dabbing memes to Alan Clark because he hates that. So we all know what wax dabs are, you mm-hmm. know, for the most part, and he is huge into that. And so every time I, a meme happens to cross my my Facebook feed that's about Cam Newton's dabbing, I'm like, "Hey, Alan!" And I share it to him. He goes, Ugh. He like seethes with rage the whole time. Uh-huh. Me up. You know, my thing is this: is like, you know, Denver. Okay, my old, I, I want to see Peyton Manning finally. Finally retire and retire on top. He's, I like, agree. he's like 50 years old right now. I don't think they can make a helmet big enough for that forehead anymore. Like it seems to just get bigger and bigger. <laughs> and, his, and his ankles have to be taking some long-term damage big from, forehead, the, from like, the ice skates. You know, they have to be hurting his ankles. <laughs> oh, man. I know. Ice I hope okay. there's, there's a new movie about how the NFL knew for years that ice skates were affecting players. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's not cool. Man. That's, that's not no, cool. No, there's chronic swelling and bone degeneration. It's yeah. not something you want to play around with. <laughs> yes, there's like, there's like a scene in the trailer where Wilson's like, You have got to listen to me! Their feet! <laughs> <laughs> Their feet are in trouble! <laughs> you know, Check it out. It's called, uh, what's the movie called? Concussion. No, uh, I think you're talking about the the sprain. Yeah. The sprain. <laughs> The sprain, starring Will Smith. That's not right, man. Yeah. That's what you call teamwork, right? There. That's <laughs> okay, all right. So, again, let's, listen. You're going for the Broncos? Yes, sir, I am. I'm, at, I, I'm rooting for, I, I don't like Denver. Okay. I'm rooting for Peyton Manning. Okay. But I really want the Panthers to win. Okay. I really do want the Panthers. And are they the North Carolina Panthers or the South? Or are they both, like, the both Carolina North, no, Panthers? North, they represent Carol. They represent both Carolinas, but they are from North Carolina. Do they have the consent from both Carolinas to represent <laughs> both Carolinas? Or is it like one of the Carolinas is like, we're the only Carolina with a team. We no, man, I heard you said that you, like, you rep us. Yeah. You not rep us, dog. <laughs> we got our own team. Yeah, but they're not in the in NFL. No, it doesn't matter. We still got them. <laughs> we still got a team. Jerry's real good. Who's Jerry? I don't know his last name, but he's on a team. I heard he's real good at sharing. We can share. Good team player. He always passes the ball. Always. Yeah, but he's not supposed to. He's a receiver. He's still, he's a real, real, real good team player. No, there's probably enough Panther to go around all the characters. I'll say just for the sake of you know, uh, you know, loving my sister. You know, she spent most of her adult life in North Carolina. She's all about the Panthers. So, for for her sake, I'm going for the Panthers. Going for the Panthers yeah. too. A lot of people are saying that this is going to be a blowout. A lot of people saying that it's going to be a big game. Well, well big they're saying, listen, there. A lot of people are saying that Denver's has no chance that they, if they don't lose by 30 points it's going to be it's going to be a miracle if they don't lose by at least 30 points and look at look at well, no, I, I, no 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 I, I you're not even a real Bronco fan right right are you really absolutely my family's from there I've been rooting for Denver since I was little my uh, I thought you were a cowboy fan didn't you tell me you like the Cowboys right, <laughs> right. no I'm being serious no dead serious no no you have so, that smug demeanor. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I see where the racism comes from. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> You're a Broncos fan. Did you guys uh, see the, online that a uh, town in North Carolina, had, they changed one of their uh, signs on the side of the road to the, what they believe the score is going to be between Denver and North Carolina? Mm-hmm. It was like 7 and, seven and 20 seven or, or 27 or something like that. But yeah, they, the, the city posted a sign um, right outside the city limits of... Um, it didn't say North Carolina. It said um, the town that you yeah. were like driving towards. So it said Denver seven, and then the town was like twenty seven. And the, well, the I, city I saw like, people driving past, like Denver's not seven miles. Up. <gasps> oh, 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 shots fired! <laughs> no Spend my tax money on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do they have clean drinking water? <laughs> yeah, I can understand putting that sign up in Denver, thing, but putting it here is kind of singing to the choir. <laughs> People who get it, like the four percent of North Carolina, no offense, who so get it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <It's> like <laughs> driving past and have no idea. The hey, get your Google out. Ooh, get your you Google out. We're really close. To, that close to Denver. Get your Google out. <laughs> hey Siri, where Denver at? I'm trying. <laughs> 
You know, I, I, right. I'm going to watch. I, yeah, I'm definitely going to watch the. I'm going to watch the Super Bowl. Um, but like I said, my thing is that uh, I think I'd like to see Peyton go out on top. I really would. And finally, to, to finally just retire. I think he needs. To, I agree with that. I think he needs, right. needs to give himself a break. But um, I just don't think any. I don't think anybody can beat Carolina. Well, Carolina definitely, without a doubt, has. I mean, they're a strong team. They wouldn't be there otherwise. Um, I think the key to Denver winning is you got to shut down the run first. And one thing that's true across the majority of Super Bowls is de- defense wins championships. Mm-hmm. Even when Denver did get smoked by Seattle, it's because Seattle's defense was so stout. And now the rules are reversed. Uh, North Carolina actually has the number one offense in the league. Uh, Denver has the number one defense in the league. So, as in my opinion, um, I, I can start telling you, I can start telling you specifics in defense, but uh, yeah, then you're really confused. <laughs> so don't do that. But it doesn't help. Doesn't matter how good your defense is if your star quarterback breaks his old hip like, in the first quarter, like hey, <laughs> 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 well, well, I'm well, taking my central children. That's, that's true. But see where, I, where I'm hoping because I'm old. <laughs> Where I'm hoping is that his his, uh, Wait, his ankles old? his ankles will be wrapped and his skates really good and then that way that way the skates you know support him and he so you're just gonna go you gotta yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah. tie him tight that's the thing you, you just gotta, gonna, you got it real real tight hold on yeah. hold on you're what? just gonna join in you're just gonna allow that to happen yeah. oh, how, no. how loyal <laughs> a fan are you you're just gonna <laughs> join in no, 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 defend no, no, your what, team what's oh. the movie with the uh, hockey player who starts doing uh, ice uh, ice dancing the mighty titans or no no that's mighty ducks but I'm mighty dancing hockey with football here what's the wait are you talking about remember the Tyson that's <laughs> very clever. Yeah. Um, Boxing, right? Will Ferrell, that's the movie you're talking about, right? Um, no, but that's a very good good uh, reference there. Wait, um, hold on. Let's get back to you not defending. He's I'm about to oh, I'm not defending. Yeah. Oh, we're back on football. Okay, okay. Cool. Right. Right. Let's see, let's see just the difference is, I mean, it doesn't matter what I say because I, I'm rooting for him no matter what. I don't have to go out and say... Be like every. I, I never played for for Denver, so I can't say that. Oh, this is my team, and we're going to do this, and and I'm, they're not. I root for them. Absolutely, as, loyalty. As gosh. as fo- as huge football fans, though, let me ask you this, guys. Sure. Tell me. Obviously, both obviously <clears throat> the teams, the, the Panthers and the and the horses, have made it this far. Right. And they, <laughs> and they are the horses. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> the cats and, and the horses have made it this far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you could have stayed soon. Um, the, the Panthers and the horses have made it this far. So correct. Obviously, they both enjoy excellent levels of luck, right? Correct. You know, correct. Made, absolutely. Good point. But mm-hmm. you personally, as human beings, how do you gauge your own personal luck? With do you sport their gear the day of the show and do you rep them, or do you like, oh, you know, like my luck isn't show. quite the same as, as yeah. my yeah. team? No, I, I, I better I, just like shut my mouth and not wear the gear. Wait, hold on. First of all, do you ever like have like a really bad day like on the day of the game? Do you feel like you don't want to associate with your team? I don't want my bad day to leak onto my team. No, because that's, that's keep the jersey off and keep it in the closet. That's loyalty. You, you, you support them. I mean, if you're if you're from, I don't know, a few years back. See, one thing I don't watch is basketball. So, uh, who was it? The Los Angeles Clippers. They were doing bad for a while. And, I mean, you still had, but you had no idea because you weren't watching. Right, exactly. But I, I do catch up on the news and this <laughs> kind of how, so That's kind of the point being <laughs> is you're still you're still you're still <laughs> if you're a fan you still represent them, right? You still yeah. support them a little more. So I mean it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me if you know somebody hates the Broncos. I mean it's just you don't like him. That's so. disrespectful. I think oh, yeah. his point that he's making that's, is he's not a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I think those guys <laughs> consider themselves Part of the team. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Oh, oh, my name. I'm just saying this. If you're gonna if you're gonna sit here and say you're a Broncos fan, be a Broncos fan through and through. You don't just say, "Well, it doesn't matter." It does matter to you. You should be ashamed of yourself. What What does it matter? For example, he's talking about ice skating and ankles, and you just go by feet right into it to avoid the conflict. Hey, stand up for your team. Well, <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, well, why do you think that because of your bad behavior today, do you think the Broncos will win? Absolutely. I, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have my bad behavior. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, 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 wait. So, I'm still curious to why me not jumping on the tables and flipping out is, is being disloyal. 
I'm not saying you have to jump on the table and flip out, but if he says something about your quarterback, at least take a stand. Don't go and feed into the joke by agreeing with it. Give me a little sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> just like knock me in the mouth once, you know? Yeah. I love that you guys are mad at him for not getting mad about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. How, are, how are you not? I'm so <laughs> mad at you right now for not defending <laughs> your, your guy against his joke. You said something about skates, he said something about skates, and what is going on? I thought we were talking about football. <laughs> Okay. What happened to football? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what really happened was, you know, they, they started using composite metals and skates, and then just, you have things skate down. Well, well one thing being football. said is I don't get too worked up over much. They, they've already known that, so that's... Yeah, uh, so 10 I'm seconds ready. ago, you were about ready to yank... Uh, or like, 20 minutes ago, actually, you were ready to yank danger over the table for not clarifying what interview meant, you know? Yeah. So don't tell me you don't get worked up. <laughs> Right before Kevin came in, you were about to strangle David. Yeah. I saw the look you get. It was that. It was that. That really pretty marine <laughs> ex police officer. Yeah. <laughs> not even close. Not even close. That's just all right. So the things in the world meaner than that. Look. Yeah. <laughs> That's a marine. That yeah, dad who only disciplines whenever he really has to. Yeah. Kind of look. Right. right. Oh, now you see my my old man. My father was like that, so it's probably so. <clears throat> one of the other things that uh, I was looking at. Um, and I, 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 we were talking about it earlier. I don't know how you feel about this. If you keep up with the news, the hard hitting news. So, right now, Nicki Minaj and Miley Cyrus are engaged in a serious uh, battle with each other. Do they ice skate too? No, they don't. I just about this shit. Dude. Wait, so we're talking about the news? We're done with football, dude. Yeah, we're, oh, done, okay. yeah, we're done with football. Okay. We're talking about hard hitting news now. So, okay. Miley so. Cyrus, Nicki Minaj, and I don't know if you saw this a couple of was about six months ago. She mm-hmm. called Miley Cyrus out on MTV. What kind hard. of res- Yeah, she hard. called her straight out. Like, she accepted her award, and Miley Cyrus was hosting the MTV Awards, and she called Miley out right there. Like, yo, what's I did up? not hear about that. Yeah, called her straight out. Well, she now, said, and I quote, What's good, Miley? <laughs> End quote. Really? Yeah. Okay. 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 Right so, there on stage with the microphone. Everybody on the table. And she did the. So now yeah. they're going at it. Now they're going at it again. Okay. What do you think about that? Um, depending on what kind of history they have, but to be completely honest, in my opinion, it's kind of ridiculous for them to have beef for the simple fact that you're <clears throat> both essentially billionaires. Right. Like when it comes to actual cash holdings, millionaires. But when it comes to like. Hannah Montana has been a defunct TV show for what six years now. They still sell the merch. She right. still makes money off of that. Nicki Minaj, she's got perfume, she's got makeup, she's got clothing, as does Miley Cyrus. What kind of beef could you honestly have yeah. that matters between the two of you whenever you could literally buy countries I, I and make them the fight each that, other? I hadn't considered <laughs> the fact that Miley is still getting Disney royalty. Oh, yeah. One of those like She's still up on stage with her finger like, ah, <laughs> cashing that Disney check. <laughs> right? Ka-ching. I feel like every time she goes to get, like, I feel like she would be the kind of person to go physically pick it up for the sake of it, too. Being like, you know, you know we could direct cause of this or, like, send it to you. She goes, oh, I know. I just want you to see me take that money for it you. In my fucking mouth. <laughs> right, she just walks up, she's like, <laughs> What are you doing? This mouth makes all, all that money. I do what I want. <laughs> What's good, Miley? <laughs> well, no, listen, it, it's, it's, gotten, it's gotten real. I mean, well, and, you know, Nikki's, Nikki's really offended that Miley would even spit her name out of her mouth, right? So now all these other people are jumping into this mix. I wish we could take calls on this. I know, right? I, <clears throat> my and, and, you know, I could call. I could call my mom. She might have an idea of what's going on. She loves TMZ. Yeah. <laughs> so it, well, the whole point of that was I just wanted to see. I really wanted to see what your guys' take on that was. I wanted to see who, what you thought about Nikki and Miley. I could see Nikki going at it with Little Kim. That you know they did. They totally went at it. Yeah, they had they had a little they bit of beef there for a while. But that, what I'm saying is that, see, now that to me, that's okay, that's rap, rappers going back to Well, but you have all the same thing. It's like, they're, the they're, they're on the same show. level. We can't trust any of this stuff. Yeah. It's most likely some clear channel orchestrated. There's someone who makes seven figures who's like, oh, I have this great idea to get Miley and Nikki to get on Twitter and say a few things. And then they'll say something and they'll follow it up at the Kids' Choice Awards. Oh my God. Well, it's funny you bring that up because there was that whole thing when Miley Cyrus was just starting to get out of the Hannah Montana thing <clears throat> and she was having that beef with 
Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez when they were all still teenagers and they it was like this internet you know webcam God, to see BS that they were doing and then they all came out and admitted yeah, after the fact that, 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 that it was all an orchestration by Disney to drum up sales yeah. they wanted to create a competition so that more people would be like well I'm Team Miley go buy they a bunch of Miley they want a between the good girls and the bad girls exactly yeah. pick sides yep and yeah. at the time, Miley was the good girl, and Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez were the bad girls. That's why like, Twilight like, was so successful. It's like, are you a good girl or a bad girl? Because it doesn't matter because you're still going to buy this movie. It's perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>, right? <laughs> team <laughs> Edward or Team... Yeah. Whatever the fuck the other guy's yeah. name was. <laughs> but it's the same. It's Team Twilight. It's the same team, movie. Team, buy it. Do you like the werewolf or the <laughs> sparkly vampire? Because we, we don't care. Because you're still your paying money. us. Yeah. <laughs> We love the fact that there's glitter in hundred dollar bills now. We have so many of them, thanks to you. Well, it's the same thing. If I was the same record company owns them both, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, it's like, or if, if not, then it all goes down to Clear Channel in the end. So. Well, even if it's not orchestrated, you know, yeah. I understand that you're you, you're saying that there is that you know the, the separation between the genres of what they do. But in all seriousness, there really isn't at this point because. Um, Nicki Minaj has gone from straight hip hop to more of the pop genre of music. You should like your team Miley the way you keep saying Nicki Minaj. <laughs> I think yeah. I got conditioned by that because of my ex girlfriend used to say it like that all the time. Um, but uh, and then with Miley Cyrus, um, you know she she went from being soft pop to this weird kind of like. Date rape. Like, <laughs> yeah, wow. When I watch oh, her, I'm like, that's all this is. Like, you are, you date raped me into watching whatever this yeah, the yeah, hell this is. Like, offensive. Yeah, yeah. And, and so they all she came into your life like a wrecking ball. Right? right? You didn't, you know, <laughs> open the door for Miley. <laughs> she came into the room licking that fucking sledgehammer. With that big, and that big foam, <laughs> and that big foam finger. <laughs> Just doesn't care. Yeah. Well, she's being, yeah, she was also accused of single handedly ruining Robin Thicke's marriage. Um, well, Robin Thicke ruined his own marriage. Yeah, he's been hey, ruining that marriage hey, for a long time. time. <laughs> no, marriage. he did not. Well, if you get, if you, it just, it, I feel personally that if you, it's kind of like a Cosby situation. If everybody and their mother comes out of the woodwork with a little story about you, then chances are, it's like, which is the more likely scenario? It's like, is are there like liars everywhere on the planet, or is there, there are haters, haters everywhere? On or is Robin Thicke kind of, you know, that song he made was freaking rapey and crude and gross. Yeah, it was a weird, cre- you know, which song? You know, you want it. Blurred lines. And the blurred lines. If you oh, that mean? No, it's it's, like, it's the if you if you don't listen to the lyrics or you don't pay close enough attention to it, it's like oh yeah cool. Whatever. But if you, yeah, listen, but if you it's listen to it, it's, it's basically talking about day raping somebody. It's talking about. Drugging them. Is it really? And yeah. fucking them. And how there's a Just blurred the line on... It, 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 the, 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 the term blurred line in that song basically and almost literally is referencing if a girl's really fucked up and you hook up with her when she's totally hammered, it's a blurred line. There's, you're not crossing a line because it's so blurred that how do you know you're crossing it? So yeah, if you really listen to the lyrics, it's pretty bad. It's, it's kind of like, whoa, dude, because he talks about... You know, he talks about doing a bunch of different kind of drugs, but it's all, you know, in reference of the, you know, being as coy as you can about it. But, and it's another, like, um, The weekend is another good case of that. You yeah, know, the wet face? Well, there's that, um, which is, that's just talking about doing cocaine with somebody. Bro. But if you look at his... Damn, own, I'm not listening to these lyrics. I know. Yeah, <laughs> if, if you, if you go know, into his, his, his catalog um, before he started getting picked up more um, more regularly by the radio and, you know, getting the deals and, and touring, um, if you look at a lot of his older stuff whenever he was first really coming up, some of, there's actually one song that basically is all about hooking up with a girl while she's passed out at a party and how there's nothing wrong with that. And it's like, plus whoa, his, buddy. His wife, who is like uh, much more than just his wife, is like kind of like a major player in his career and his life and everything, up and left him immediately after he got famous after that song dropped. Yep. And he tried to get her back by naming his next album after her. And uh, she wants nothing to do with him. If some um, you know, human being wants nothing to do with you anymore. And Who's this, The Weeknd? No, 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 he's you're, you're right back on the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, people, if, if, it's all this, if there's all this jive about you, then, you know, what are the chances? That it's all made up. Right. Really. Well, uh, well, hold on. Hey, you listen. A lot can be said about that, and I agree. There, you know, there could be some. And listen, Robin did come out and say, "Hey, look, I made some mistakes. I'm, you know, I'm a man. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm a man. I'm human. I made some mistakes." But here's the thing. Let's give the guy a break. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know. Why do I have to, I have to give him a break? 
<laughs> dude, I'll get that dude in there. Do you know how much money that guy has? His dad is Alan Thick. <laughs> My favorite part about Robin Thick is if you look at his first album, mm-hmm. he's a long haired, like, John Mayer type. Yeah. Um, he, you know, I'm serious. His hair was like down to here. His first music video was yeah. him riding a bicycle through New York and he's singing about he's how singing much he's singing a song from the end of Rockstar. He's like, I know I can be. <laughs> he's, it's all about like, I love you, girl. You're so, you're my world, girl. Like that kind of shit. And then you look at him now and he's very much a, um, he, he was built by his record label because, you know, what he does now is, it's great. It's fun to listen to and party to and everything. But if you look at what he started out with on his own before he was signed to a major la- record label mm-hmm. and, and was being pushed out there with real money, he was completely on the other side of the right. spectrum musically. He was built up by it. And there's a lot yeah. of stuff that's orchestrated. Here's, actually, there's a good example of why I think the stuff with Miley and Nikki is probably orchestrated. All the ones you hear about oh, excuse me, are orchestrated. It's because did you hear did you hear about Chris Brown and his boys jumping um, Frank Ocean in the garage and kicking his ass, mm-hmm. and calling him a faggot? Mm-hmm. Did you hear about that? No. What? Yeah, because that's a real beef. That was a mm-hmm. real thing that actually happened. When did that happen? Chris Brown, the famous Chris Brown, who's you know, like can't seem stuff? to keep his shirt on and so stop. No, Frank Ocean like, is an openly gay R&B he's singer. Like, oh, he's a, and he's, his last dope. album is he, really Oh, dope. absolutely. Hell yeah. Man, he's dope. I love yeah. his so, um, too. He, uh, he, he got caught in some uh, parking garage out, out in Beverly Hills by uh, Ordinator, uh, by Chris Brown. When did this happen? Uh, I don't know. So we can look it up. Um, but basically, um, he got jumped. He got punched in the mouth. He got jumped by Chris Brown and his crew. They threw some slivers around. And... Uh, was it just random, or was there something that? There, no, there was a show. Yeah. They were coming out of a show. Here's what here's what I find very uh, here's what I find very. Upsetting but you don't that. hear about real things where actually, like you said, like it's something like Miley Nick is getting real. It's like no one's getting punched in the mouth in the garage. Yeah, no getting beat up. Well, here's no the thing. Surrounded by. But going to that, listen to this. Going to that, like Chris Brown, like that whole thing with him just it, it infuriates me. Here you are, an R and B singer. Trying to be a rapper, hardcore. Now you're tatted up to your ears, and you know you you. It just listen, bro. Do what you're good at. That's like yeah. Justin Bieber. You know, did you see his roast when they did his roast? I haven't had a chance oh, to. I, I want to. So you have to see it. I heard they, that Martha Stewart brought straight. Oh, fire. Snoop ripped him. Luda ripped him. Like, I mean, they were like, "Yo, man, like, you know, throwing eggs at a house that ain't gangster, bro. Like, mm-hmm. You know, you <laughs> stop acting black. You're not black. Yeah, yeah. they went in on. I mean, they they went hard. Um. What? Hey, who's that comedian I was just talking to you about? Danger. Uh, January twenty eighth, two thousand thirteen. So two Chris, years ago, Chris was at a West Side West Lake studio in L A. Listening to one of uh, the artists he represents. The sources say as Chris went to leave, Frank Ocean and his wait what? Maybe it was the opposite. It says Frank Ocean and his group blocked Chris from leaving. The source says uh, Frank said, "This is my studio. This is my parking lot." Um, we're told that Chris went to shake Frank's hand, and that's when one of Frank's people attacked Chris. Oh, so I had it backwards. Thanks, so danger. Connected to Chris says one of his friends jumped in front of him and hit Frank's friend. So it was a brawl. It was like they're all hitting each other. Um, well, you made it sound like he was gay bashing. <laughs> Man, well, dude. one of the other stories this that I heard you get your third hand news had from. Stuff <laughs> <in the third-hand laughs> <part. laughs> Not second, yeah. not first. Never mind, I take back the witnesses, 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 before. Here's one. Witnesses say that Brown threw the first punch. Well, yeah, he was getting jumped. Uh, if he went to if he should, went to shake Frank's hand and Frank popped him one. But listen, I am going to say this. Yeah. In Frank's defense, that, that dude got a lot of heat from a lot of people, you know, about him coming out. And, you know, I listen... I respect I respect I respect Frank Ocean a lot. Like, yeah. I love his music. I think he's great. But um, going back to this whole Justin Bieber, roast, yeah, you got to see that. Hey, did you see it, Danger? Did you see the roast on Justin Bieber? Yeah, it's pretty funny. Oh, what, what was that? The, the comedian, the, the black comedian at the very end. You you told me his name. I keep Hannibal Burris. Hannibal. Oh, Hannibal Burris ate him alive. Oh, Hannibal was like, you know, I don't, I don't, Hannibal was like, I don't even like you. I don't like your face, man. He was like, I'm Hannibal Burris is why this is happening to Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he was like, who, he's the one who brought it up the first time in he, like 2009. Because apparently it was just like a theme, and he was like, why are people talking about this? And everyone was like, what? And then they started talking about it. But it was so it. funny the way he did Justin. Yeah. He was like, I'm not, even, amazing, I'm not here for you. I'm here for the publicity. I, I don't even like your face. I don't like your music. <laughs> like, and Justin was like, what? He was like, yeah, man, I don't 
really care for you all that much. <laughs> like, he was, it was, and I, you didn't know if he was being real or if he was actually just trying to be funny because you know it's a roast. But Hamill Burst don't fuck around. No, he was, he was he was just like I don't even I don't really like your face. He's one of my favorite comedians because he is right. like he goes up there and he puts it out there. He does not. There are no airs about Hamill Burst. If like when he says I don't like you, man. He doesn't like you. Like, whenever you brought up the Bill Cosby thing, in the original video um, that somebody got of him, which is what really blew it up, he was at a show, somebody was um, had their phone out, and he brought up the Bill Cosby thing. He was like, hey, man, do you guys remember that, like, in 2006, he, you know, raped somebody, mm-hmm. and now it's coming up again, and nobody's talking about it? And somebody videotaped the whole thing, posted it, and then he brought it up again in another special, and was like... Oh, yeah, so man. Had to hammer it. To yeah, that. and he was like, "I don't see why." He goes, "I'm a black man. Yeah, I'm a young black dude. I grew up with Cosby. I don't respect any of that shit." He was like, "I don't care if he was America's dad or whatever. He raped people, and raping is wrong." And like, Jeez. you know, and that's how Hannibal Burris is. And like, you would take him down. Blurred lines. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, uh, well, in this case, not whole, so much with the whole Bieber yeah, thing, you know. On the show. I and I'll, and same goes for Chris Brown. Both of those guys. Chris Brown, you know, was signed when he was twelve. Yeah. You know, it's, it, Bieber was, I think, uh, like when he, right? he, was he, was, he was nine. He was nine when he got signed, and his first album came out when he was like eleven or twelve years old. And it's like these both of those dudes grew up with literally no boundaries. And so I don't necessarily respect a lot of the things that they do, a lot of things that they say, but I will say that you can't necessarily expect a lot from these guys because they have no concept of what it is to be a, a very normal fair person. Person. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they, it was like, you're 13 and you have $18 million personally on top of whatever else is in an account off to the side that you're making from promotions and from merchandising right. and everything like that. And so, and, and, and one thing that I, I can give a little bit of respect towards Justin Bieber now is he's becoming a little more self-aware oh, yeah. of what he was doing and who he is. And he's, and the, being able to go up there and let people roast him the way they did, oh, hey, that's, yeah. that's a huge amount of self-awareness and also just um, acceptance of the fact that, holy shit, I've been a total shithead for the past well, And you know, it's funny you said that because right after the roast, when he got up and he spoke, um, you know. He he went up there and after he get funny because he kind of roasted the, the whole the whole lineup himself, you know. Um, but he said after he was like, I just want everybody to know that I'm I'm sorry. Like I, I made a lot of foolish mistakes. I you know I, I made some choices that I shouldn't have. And he he owned up. To it. He, he, and since then he's been. If you notice, he's he's not ever in the news. He's right. not doing anything crazy right. or stupid. And it, it, a lot of the times it takes things like that where you have an entire world, like literally the entire world was like, stop, stop, <laughs> seriously, we're noticing, fucking stop it. You're yeah. a skinny little white dude from Canada, you're not black, you're not hood, you're not hard. And the same, like, um, a good example I always like to bring up when it comes to that is uh, Lil Wayne. You know, yeah. he talks about how hard he is and all, all that stuff. And it's like, None of that was because of your your circumstances. Those those were all choices you made for yourself. Right. Like uh, the one time he's been shot, when he was eleven, he shot himself in the chest with his dad's gun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and then when it came to selling drugs and everything like that, he didn't have to sell drugs. He was actually, if he would have graduated high school, he would have graduated um, literally the, the number so one top of it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. And he dropped out to start rapping. He was a highly intelligent kid. Grew up in a fairly decent home, you know, for the most part. He manufactured all of that stuff for himself for the sake of street cred. So, so Wayne! Of, you know, <laughs> and, and I will always say that the most disappointing part about his career is the fact that he got so hooked on uh, Cody. Mm-hmm. That if you listen to him now, there's no intelligence behind his no. lyrics. Whereas if you listen to him 10 years ago, he was one of the most intelligent dudes on him. And you right. doing it. He did an entire album where he didn't write down a single thing on paper. Right. He freestyled the entire album. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yeah. And now you look at him and he's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's in my car. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't none your business. Shut it. It's in it's my like, car. What the fuck are you doing, you little gremlin? Like, get it together. <laughs> but again, you're talking about a guy who has $300 million in the bank. He, you know, he's not asking, pop a night, down a night. Uh, that's happened in studio. No joke. No joke. One of his most recent recording sessions, not like this year, but like in the last two years, he was in the middle of recording and just started going, eh. 
and like fell off the mic, and they're like, dude, get the fuck out. Yeah, like, <laughs> whenever you hear the auto tune coming, like, wow, I'm back, y'all. The next day. <laughs> well, you know, and listen, that, that's actually a good lead off into the very next, you know, quick segment. Is, yeah. Uh, oh, let me stop you there. We're on a show time. Really? No, no, no. It's the hour and a half. Oh, no, no. We, we've got oh, it. Oh, right. 45. We got five. Okay, well, real quick. Okay. <clears throat> I wanted to say, uh, man, Danger, that's a way. That's a heck of a way to cut me off. <laughs> three minutes ago, I whispered very gently. Did you really? Yeah. Did you? I even looked at you. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't see any of that. All right, well, look, yeah. I'll thank, take the blame on that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for having my back. See, that's loyalty. That's loyalty. That's something you should learn. You took the Disrespect. Fall. That's really good. Well, let me say this. Good people. I told you we should have them on the show. Yes, very good. Thank you for being here with this Definitely. It's a pleasure to have you. Do it anytime. And we, we would definitely love to have you back, man. And we definitely got to go out and see one of your shows. And, um, you know, if you guys are in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, man, make sure you go out and uh, support Kevin, support Danger. These guys are working comedians. These guys are out here doing it daily and doing things that uh, this community really needs. You know, I wanted to finish up every show now with something that is really close to me and I real I feel very strongly about, it, and that's fighting for your dreams, living your dreams. Don't ever let anybody tell you you can't achieve something that you really want. If you go out and you work hard every single day, you know, you do something every day that means something then don't let anybody else tell you that you can't do it. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say they want it, they act like they want it, you know, they tell other people they want it, but they really don't. They're really not, you know, willing to put in the work. Um, you know, we really want to, we really want to be able to share that with you and tell you, hey, if you want something out of life, man, don't, don't let anybody stop you from going to get it. Um, there's so much negativity out in the world today, you know, what our real goal is, is to spread positivity and make sure that everybody enjoys just a moment in time where they can laugh and we can enjoy ourselves and, you know, have good people on the show and, uh, you know, and that's really what it's about, man. Just enjoy your life. Don't, uh, don't let the negativity of life. I say this all the time. Most people never live their dreams because they're too busy living life. Don't let life take you away from what you really want to do. Uh, with that being said, I want to tell everybody, make sure you follow us on Instagram at The Focus Podcast on Twitter, at The Focus Podcast. If you would like to sponsor our show or be a part of our show, email us at thefocuspodcast at gmail.com. I want to thank my co-hosts again, Danger K. Barros, Joshua Lucera, and our man of the hour, tell them, how can they find me? Um, you can find me all over Facebook uh, at uh, or pretty much any uh, form of social media at Kevin's Not Funny. So Facebook, backslash, Kevin's Not Funny. Twitter, Kevin's Not Funny. Instagram, Kevin's Not Funny. Um, also, check out The Speakeasy on Facebook. Um, it's uh, facebook.com backslash comedy at The Speakeasy. Mm -hmm. And then the group I work with, Player 2, is um, Player 2 Comedy at Facebook. And those are pretty much all the best ways. And then on Monday nights, Back Alley Draft House downtown, if you're in Albuquerque, if you're a local listener and watcher. Um, the, you know, and just kind of keep up there. And if you friend me, you usually, like, you, you sent me a friend request just the other day, and I was like, I don't know this person, but I'm going to be their friend. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, and you know, the thing is, I want to also, again, mention one more time, uh, thank you to all our sponsors, RSP Nutrition, Money is King, the movie, MAC-10 Clothing Gear, Ray Dulce Clothing Gear, uh, anything Caveman else. Coffee. Caveman Coffee. Big shout out to Keith Jardine, Tate Fletcher for Caveman Coffee. Um, watch our next episode. Our next episode is going to be on... Breaking up to making up, actually breakups on Valentine's Day mm, with Diane Viegas. With Diane Viegas, yeah. Um, if if you don't know who she is, look her up on uh, Facebook. Uh, she's a, an incredible actress and uh, has a bright, bright future. But she's also got the mouth of a sailor. It's kind of funny, you know. You look at her. To that. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet you do. And uh, I'm not gonna say anything about you, Josh. <laughs> I don't even want to look at you about that. But she's going to be on our next episode, the Unvalentine's Day episode. If you have any stories of your heart being broken or being done wrong, and you want us to talk a little bit about it on the show, email us at thefocuspodcast at gmail.com or hit us up on Twitter or Instagram. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Yo,